we spoke almost exactly a year ago and you were wearing that same malevolence hoodie. <laughs> which is yeah, um, I don't uh I don't have a like a big wardrobe and it's mostly band merch and um I'm not one of those people that spend, spends money on clothes. I just wear the same stuff day in, day out. And I love malevolence, so yeah. <laughs> this is fair. Look, I I I literally have an entire wall. I hang them up on coat hangers just so I can see how big the collection's growing. And I must have like 70 band shirts at the moment. Oh, nice. It's just it's ridiculous. Oh uh, dear. Mate, we spoke uh last time we spoke, a sign of things to come was about to be released. How do you feel it was received? Yeah, amazingly, really well. I think um just the response was so overwhelmingly positive that um I mean I, I could tell that it was gonna be slightly different for us. Like we definitely uh hone things down and and tried to not make the album too long that kind of thing and there's a bit more like groove elements and the back in the day when, when we released our first records in like 2008 onwards that was a time when like metalcore and deathcore were like rising up and there was so much of it you play a show like a local show and every band would be doing the same thing the same riffs trying to sound like azalea dying or whatever and um we just wanted to like separate ourselves and just be like no we're we're gonna like just be like proper metal quote unquote uh, and that's no disrespect to any of those bands but um so we we kind of like made sure that we tune our guitars up standard tuning just listening to like injustice for all just playing like thrash and there was like not really a spoken rule but like nothing that resembled a breakdown because we didn't want to get lumped in with whatever else was going on and as much as that helped us in that we kind of stood out on our own path, uh, it means that now when we just try and incorporate any groove, people are like, oh, they're going metalcore, which is, I don't care about that anymore. I, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't really care about having to appeal to like elitists or anything. I, I don't know if it is elitist that are saying that, but when, when the band started, like, before we did the first record, so like eight years before that, when we were just kids, it was all about Pantera, like Machine Head, like just super heavy groove stuff. And I was always scared to put that in because I didn't want to be called a metalcore band. And now that I'm just older and don't care, um, yeah, it's 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 a bit of a different record because there's a bit more of that groove element coming through. Um, and I think some fans are like, oh, they they're trying to emulate this band it's just no this is actually the closest we've been to how we would sound if we were that good when we first started when we were kids it's all the same influences like late Pantera, like great southern tranquil machine head more things change iowa by slipknot all that kind of stuff that we grew up on um just coming out a bit more in our music now yeah um just realize as you were listing off those bands, I've been very fortunate because I've literally seen you know, Machine Head, Pantera, all of these bands this year alone. Like it's just been oh sick, yeah, nice. it has been uh, just insane year for gigs. And yeah, we had uh, Fear Factory and Machine Head play a double header gig down here, and it was just utterly oh. insane. And yeah. Pantera headline Not Fest, like it was just uh, yeah, nineties yeah. um, nostalgia. I know, right? Oh my god! Um, so, about what plans do you have to follow up uh, this record? Well, we're always writing. That's not something that is ever just like we're in writing mode. It's just a constant um, thing. I, I always describe it as spinning plates. Like I've always got tons of projects on my computer of like individual songs, and one song might be ninety percent finished. And one song might just have like a few riffs and I just chip away at all of them and just build them all up as the year or years go on. Um, so yeah, there's, there's definitely a bunch of songs already written for the next record. Um, trying to make it heavier. <laughs> um, if I'm honest, like I saw like a comment the other day that was like, Oh, I wish 
uh, they did some more like melodic stuff. This is like when Pantera got heavier and they ditched all the mo melodic stuff and Cowboys from Hell. Such a shame. And to me, I always looked at when I was a kid, Pantera to be the benchmark of like they got heavier and heavier and heavier, mm. and the band got bigger and bigger. And as a fan of super heavy music, because I was super into death metal, I was like, yes, this is sick. Give me the heaviest shit possible. So I can't help but see comments like that where people are like annoyed kind of take it as a win so <laughs> i feel bad i don't want our fans to like be not into it or anything but getting heavier is like the ultimate for me like i love it like when when slipknot came out i was obsessed with slipknot i was the right age i was like 13 14 or whatever and when iowa came out after discovering all this extreme music i was like yes it's even heavier this is what i want so um that's just never left me so as much as I, I think Solos' record is very varied, we always include a lot of different elements. Um, getting heavier uh, where possible is is on the cards. Anyone who holds up uh, the Great Southern Trim Kill as an example to follow is is all right in my books. That uh, that is one of my favorite albums of all time. It is just yeah. I mean, like you put on the first track and you're like, hell yes, this is yeah. super heavy. <laughs> Suicide Note Part Two, like. Oh, so intense. God, I lost my yeah, shit when it. I played that this year. It was the pure oh, yeah, yeah. pain. Oh, man. But the yeah. crazy thing is, I first heard, I was late coming to that album. Uh, Pantera was one of the first bands I got into as a kid, but I literally, it, it was only when I was like 18, 19, someone actually gave me a copy of The Great Song of Tranquil. This would have been about 2005. And I remember thinking uh, almost 10 years after the album had been released, that the Great Southern Tranquil's title track still sounds ahead of its time today. Like that, it's just bizarre that that came out in 1996. It is so forward thinking. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's super intense. I think that's something that um, it was a big influence to us because although I, I was really into death metal and extreme metal at the time, um, a song like that, or Suicide Note Part 2, is so much heavier to me than most death metal because the intensity is is almost like more extreme than some like extreme metal um so yeah I, that was like a, a big inspiration to us in the early days because we we just wanted to be as heavy as possible when we started so we'd listen to everything like dillinger escape plan loads of like the relapse records grindcore stuff pig destroyer or like burnt by the sun um and but but we wanted to just make metal metal, but just in that kind of Pantera Suicide Note Part Two, like it's metal, but it's super extreme, but not mm -hmm. death metal, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So Solosis was last in Australia uh, for the Soundwave tour, so it's been a minute. Um, yeah. Did you, when you were down here last, did you have a chance to do any of the stereotypical like Australian tour things or? So I mean, I've I've been over there tons with architects since then. Yeah. So I've I've definitely spent a lot of time. Um, but yeah, the first Soundwave trip, we did some of the touristy stuff. Go hang out with some koalas and kangaroos, um, and go to the beach. And when we were in Perth, we had a day off on Soundwave, and uh, we just like having a swim in the sea. All the bands were at the same hotel, so all the bands are just on the beach. And then the alarm went off, everyone out of the water. There was like a tiger shark swimming in the shallows. So we got the full full experience on that first trip. But yeah, it, it's a hundred. I genuinely mean it. It's my favorite place to tour. Food, coffee, weather, and the people are most similar to the UK. The sense of humor, that kind of thing. Um, it's just the flight over there sucks. <laughs> Yeah, as as have, I'm sure it does coming back the other way, but yeah, it's that's the only downside. This is true. So you mentioned architects. How do you how do you think that architects has dealt with losing their sex appeal once you left? <laughs> um, I don't know how they'll ever get over that. Yeah, uh, poor buggers. It was really inconsiderate of you. I'll say it. <laughs> but, oh, thank you. <laughs> You released a documentary about the early days of Solosis. What was the process of putting that together like? Yeah, so kind of what I, I touched on uh, earlier was that 
the new album is the closest we've come to how we would sound when we first started like really bringing like the roots of our earlier in influences out on the new record and i think i wanted to clear that up because anytime a band deviates from where they've been people are like oh they're just trying to sound like this band or this band so i just wanted to shine light on the early days and be like no this is this is kind of where we started um and it's more of a i wouldn't say the new album's just looking back but um it, and it still feels like a modern record but it just kind of showcases where we came from and there's like we started in 2000 and we put out our first record 2008 so there's a huge gap in 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 our story that no one knows about because it predates all the interviews and, and videos online and that sort of thing uh and obviously like we had a different lineup then and it's good to show um you know our original members because if we didn't have those guys that i started the band with like we may not have existed or i may not have just been able to start the band and may have just done something else um and so forever grateful to that initial lineup or lineups over those early years for helping us you know make make a, a start on this uh, journey but um yeah it was cool like we just had a bunch of like old vhs tapes to convert to digital and there was like a bunch of shows when we were just kids and our parents would drop us off and and that kind of thing and the music was bad like we we weren't very good at uh writing and, and that kind of thing but um yeah i really wanted to just kind of show the kind of full circle of bringing back some of those early influences into our music you realize I, it's like you're dangling that and daring me to make the quote of it, Solosis. The music was bad. It wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Mate, um, in, as someone who has been in front of many a mosh pit, what are some of the w wildest things you've seen happening in crowds? I don't know. I mean... It's always when these uh, interviews come up and you get these kinds of questions, my mind just goes blank. I'm like, nothing. We never yeah, had yeah. anything happen. But I'm sure we've seen some stuff. Uh, yeah, nothing comes to mind. I'm sure as soon as this interview's done, I'll be like, ah, oh, this, this, this. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the last thing that happened of any note was we had to stop a show on our headline tour. Just someone got knocked out accidentally, not a fight. That kind of thing always kind of stands out because it literally you're midway through a song and you have to stop. So, um, yeah, but I, in all honesty, nothing too crazy, like other than just like some cool mosh pits and walls of death and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, nothing comes to mind in terms of anything out there. As, as someone who has a bird's eye view of that kind of thing, this is a weird one for you. Do you, do you notice that circle pits have a certain direction because someone i literally just saw a thing it was like do you prefer clockwise or counterclockwise for your circle pits and it made me think that, um yeah. count counterclockwise it seems yeah. more common to me yeah, i don't know what i don't know is. if you do it the other way in australia because of the yeah. <laughs> but yeah typically counter <laughs> you beat me to it i was like oh that's such an easy joke bro. yeah <laughs> Uh, lastly, yeah. mate, what what would you say are some of the albums that changed your life? You mentioned some before. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of easy to reel those off. Uh, and Justice for All. Uh, the first two Slipknot records, I mean, the first one was like, I was obsessed. But I prefer what they were doing on Iowa. Mm -hmm. um, and like I say, the jump in heaviness and extreme like elements is like, I, I just love that. I love it when a metal band gets heavier and because it's like that's why we got into you uh so when bands try and go the other way it's like well we we wanted it to be we wanted you to be the band you were and that, that's why i always looked to pantera for like getting heavier so like far beyond driven i prefer that record but great something tranquil is even heavier um and death symbolic and tool enema nice i like it mate uh this has been rad Thanks again for chatting with me, dude. Um, I, I think at this point, it, but by the schedule, I think I'll be, I'll probably be speaking to you again this time next year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, Hope so. Easy, mate. Have a good day.
Yeah, you too. Have a good evening. Take Bye. care.